Star Wars 7x7 episode 2725. We are going to be talking today on a Spinner Sunday episode about another encounter with the Great Leveler and the damage it does to the Jedi in the High Republic storyline. This has to do with the Marvel High Republic comic series and the last issues in Wave 2. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So we're going to do this in highlight format that we usually do. We'll talk about five takeaways from the two story arcs that finish out wave two of phase one of the High Republic storytelling initiative within the Marvel comic series. So Shadow of the Nile is a two issue story arc. It takes place in issues nine and 10. And then Jedi's End takes place in issues 11 and 12. And they might as well constitute one story arc quite honestly, because one flows pretty seamlessly into the other. So our first takeaway is going to be the general story just very breezily <laughs> covered for these four issues. And we are going to be in spoiler territory so there's your fair warning all right so the deal is is that this is taking place after the events of the rising storm when everything went crazy on Valo and hundreds of people were killed and so the unified republic task force is busy chasing down the nile everywhere and they think lorna d is dead and that the nile are scattering and now they're just running cleanup operations avar chris wants to pursue a lead that has been developed by intercepted communications at Starlight Beacon. Selen Geos, who's on the Jedi Council, says, nope, don't want you to do it. Avar Chris says, well, I'm going to do it anyway, basically. Not to Selen's face, just behind his back. And so she sends Keeve Trennis and one of the bonded twins, Tarek, undercover, basically, to meet up with other Nile and try to find out who is in charge of the Nile now. And the plan works. They end up meeting up with some Nile, but those Nile don't trust Keeve and Tarek. And so they want them to prove their loyalty. And the way that they're going to have to do it is by killing somebody they just captured, Myarga the Hut. Yes, the same Hut who was helping the Jedi in previous issues of the High Republic series. So Keeve and Tarek find ways to not do it, not do it it and it gets to a point where the Nile themselves just start torturing Myarga and Myarga gives up Keeve and Tarek and says you've got Jedi right in your midst you idiots. So Keeve and Tarek try to fight but as the Nile discover pain is their weakness. It's hard for them to focus when people around them are in pain and Myarga is in significant pain. But Lorna D shows up and says, see, this is what I've been telling you all along to the other Tempest Runner who's there and prevents them from actually killing the Jedi, saying, like, we need them to prove that what we did at the end of the Rising Storm wasn't a fluke. And so somehow Lorna D has the leveler with her and unleashes the leveler. And of course, that is really bad news for Keeve and for Tarek. But also because of the fact that Tarek is bonded bonded with their twin Serret, Serret feels the same effects of the leveler as Tarek is experiencing. But Tarek and Serret are not quite reduced to the same calcification that Loden Greystorm was. It gets in the neighborhood and the Jedi are actually able to get to this planet Zais. I'm guessing on the pronunciation it's X-A-I-S where they have a war cloud forge. Basically it sounds like a big weapons factory for all intents and purposes. The Jedi are able to show up and chase off the Nile who are there. Lorna D manages to escape yet again with the leveler and Keeve and Tarek are rescued, but yeah, at what cost is one of those situations. Meaning that, you know, the operation found out that Lorna D was in fact alive, so that's valuable in a sense, but Tarek and Serret are definitely very gravely wounded as a result of the operation, and Keeve is shaken by her experience with the leveler. Meanwhile, as a result of all of the skirmishes that the Jedi have had with the Nile, they're apparently able to recover one of the path engines. These are the different engines on 
on the Nile ships that enable them to go through hyperspace, but not through the standard means of going through hyperspace, but through the paths, which are these odd, weird, jumpy situations that are controlled by uh, the Santeca that they've got bottled up, that Mark Shion Rowe has bottled up in his ship somewhere. And one of the paths that's programmed into the path engine is the path to the Great Hall, which is the ultimate Nile base, the headquarters in what they refer to as no space, that's just kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere and has a big you know, vacuum bubble around it. So it just looks like it's open up to the stars for all intents and purposes where they have the Great Hall. And once again, against Stellan Geos' direction, Avar Chris takes the Anaraxia, hope pronouncing that right, the big Jedi ship and takes it off to no space once they have a path engine retrofitted and installed onto the Jedi ship so that way they can use that path engine to navigate to the Great Hall. And so that's how the story arc ends, the Jedi's end story arc ends with them heading off to arrive at the no space Great Hall and bring the battle to the Nihil at their very heart of their operation. I gotta say though, <laughs> considering how they've been hinting at Wave 3 of the High Republic, I don't feel like this is gonna go very well, but yeah, we're not gonna know for another couple of weeks basically until the Wave 3 stuff starts to be released. All right, so the second takeaway for you has to do with the leveler. So we still don't have a good picture of what the leveler is or real understanding exactly of what it does aside from basically turning the force connection of the Jedi all completely crazy topsy-turvy and creating nothing but fear inside them. Like as Kiva's experienced it, she's trying to say there is no fear to herself, there is no fear, just trying to get her control back and then she just succumbs and it's just there's only fear, that's it. And as Sarit is experiencing what Tarek is experiencing, so Sarit is on the Ataraxia, nowhere near things happening where the leveler strikes, but Sarit feels the connection through Tarek and says there's no balance, there's no peace, there's only pain, and is suffering those same leveler effects. And Sarit basically describes it, while Sarit is still able to, as an emptiness or a nothingness, so like being in the void as opposed to being connected to anything. And Avar Chris says that she can no longer sense their song in the Force. So somehow their connection to the living Force has been severed. And it certainly does raise the question of, you know, exactly what that means, because as we, you know, heard from Master Yoda all those years ago, all of our own chronological years, you know, everything is imbued with the Force, right? The Force is in all living things. So does that mean that if the leveler is around just random people that aren't you know force sensitive that aren't force users that have high enough midichlorian counts right if somehow they wouldn't you know like is avar chris able to sense their song in the force as well like even just normal people and would they be similarly cut off from her being able to sense them if they were exposed to the leveler like i'm kind of curious about that myself so a third takeaway would have to do with the state of Lorna D. We know from the Tempest Runner audio that we talked about a few months ago when it came out that she was presumed dead, that she had actually been captured but assumed a different identity so that the Republic wouldn't know who she was and ultimately she took over the prison vessel that she had been imprisoned on and sent out to you know work duties and whatnot and she reconnected with the Nile and with Marcion Row and the rest of the gang but apparently her status within the Nile is, I mean, she's still a Tempest Runner as far as we know, but it seems like her status has been upgraded a little bit because Marcion Rowe was the one who had the leveler and who deployed the leveler in the Rising Storm. This, as far as I know, is the only other time we've seen the leveler deployed, and considering what a weapon it is, you would almost expect Martian Road to be managing that himself, but no, apparently Lorna D has been entrusted with the leveler, and so, yeah, that seems to indicate she has kind of risen a bit in Marcion Rowe's estimation, I imagine. For a fourth takeaway, let's talk about the division within the Jedi Order itself. And 
Part of the opening crawl of at least one of the issues speaks to the fact that different Jedi are feeling differently about these things and there's concern about Avar Chris and that perhaps she is getting a little too wrapped up in taking the action to the Nihil and that she's maybe taking things a little too personally. She even has a moment very similarly to the moment that Rey has in The Rise of Skywalker where there's a you know enemy ship fleeing and she doesn't want it to get away, so she uses the Force to try to hold on to the ship. Whereas Rey <laughs> ends up dealing with Kylo Ren and getting super mad and frying the ship. That doesn't happen in this particular case. It's Lorna D trying to escape, and Avar Chris grabs a hold of the ship with the Force. She asks for Skier and Keeve Trennis to help her pull it back down and Skier is in no shape to do it because he's losing his connection to the Force and Keeve is in no shape to do it because she just had a bout with the leveler and so the ship gets away and this only seems to double Avar Chris's resolve in thinking, yes, we have to take this battle to the Nile. We have to end it once and for all. And the fifth takeaway has to do with the Trandoshan Jedi Skier who, as we've talked about before, is losing his connection to the Force and we find out why that's the case case. So he has a degenerative brain disease, it turns out, that's particular to Trandoshans, and what it does is essentially makes them regress to their basest, most violent instincts. And as a Jedi, like his subconscious apparently has been able to kind of hold things at bay and make the progression of the disease not as rapid, but unfortunately it's cost him his connection to the Force as a result. And he gets overly violent in that rescue operation to the point where Avar Chris wants to relieve him of his duties as a Jedi, but Keeve essentially intercedes with Skier. Skier is going to, you know, stay away from everyone, and Keeve basically convinces him not to, that he's needed just in general by the Jedi and by her in specific as her master. And so Skier ends up getting on the ship in time for Avar Chris and Keeve and the rest of the gang to head off to no space to confront the Nile. And so that's the team <laughs> that's heading off to try to fight the Nile on their home turf. We have a Jedi who is possibly starting down a darker path. We have a Jedi who is suffering a degenerative brain disease that's going to make him act more violently than he should be as a Jedi. And we've got a Jedi Knight who is reeling still from the effects of having been attacked by the leveler and feeling self-doubt and guilt about what happened to Tarek and Sarah and whether she could have done anything to help save them and just yeah is definitely not ready for the next battle whatsoever like these are the three Jedi who are heading off to attack the Nile this doesn't seem like a scenario that's a good idea and especially when you consider the fact that as Lorna D is testing the leveler on Keeve and Tarek, she's saying we're trying to find out whether what happened on the you know the planet at the end of the Rising Storm with Loden Greystorm and Bell Zedifar, whether that was a fluke or whether this is the beginning of the end for the Jedi. Major, major drama basically in those four issues. High Republic, Marvel Comic Series 9 through 12, Shadow of the Nile, and Jedi's End are those story arcs. And that right there is going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.